Hi everybody, my dearest and I just came back from a nice little hike and the boots they look like this, they are wet, dirty and there is a lot of mud underneath them. And then I thought now I can clean them but let me do this in front of a camera this time. So this is the expert advice how to tutorial on how to clean your backpacking or hiking boots and also how you should maintain them for a longer lifespan. Enjoy the video! And welcome to the expert advice how to tutorial on how to clean a backpacking or hiking boot and also how to maintain them at least how I do it. Now the first thing that I always do is when I get home with boots that look like this dirty I just take them outside and I give them a proper wash. So let's do that first. I am a pretty lucky guy because I have a sort of a outdoor kitchen outside. It's an old farmhouse, so that's why this is there. Uh, what did I do? Um, just a bucket of lukewarm water. I've got warm uh, cold water here, but I don't need that. But cold water will be sufficient as well. Now, what I always use is, or a nail brush, something that you should have, or a bigger brush. Um, this is something that a masonry uses, and I'll explain later why I have this little tool. Um, and of course there is the toothbrush. This is something that you definitely need if you clean your shoes. And um, something like a old rough towel, which is of course cut into pieces. And what is also very nice to have is basically a wash glove because shoes, they are somehow similar like washing your face. They're made out of leather most of the times. Now, what I always do is I just take my boots and the first thing that you should do when you start cleaning your boots very thorough is take out the laces. And because my dears is always accompanying me on my hikes, nah, not always, most of the time, let's clean hers too. And I don't know if you can see it, but I'll take the GoPro. There are some really thorny thingies in here. We've got them a lot where we live. And when they get inside the, basically the inside area of your legs and they stick in your pants, they really hurt. And her shoes are a little bit more easy to unlace, if that's the correct word. Let's start with the ladies first, of course. Now you can see there's quite a lot of muck underneath the shoe, quite dirty. So this is where the small trowel is that the correct word comes in because what I can do I'm going to do this in the sink is just get all the dirt out of there and especially the ones that are a little bit dried up this one is this is a perfect tool for this you can do this with a screwdriver of course or just with a regular piece of wood but this will get the most out of there now after you've done this then what I do, I just take the rough brush, take some lukewarm water and just rinse the whole shoe in the water. Um, I don't use any uh, soap detergent whatsoever uh, because well, I've learned my trade in the outdoor from a really nice guy who's been in his life in outdoor uh, all his life. And he, well, basically he's my master in how to, well, all my knowledge that I have about shoes. And he said, well, you can use detergent. There are some manufacturers who make really special cleaning um, detergents for shoes. You can use them, but he says it's not absolutely necessary. Now, and the good thing about when you're cleaning your shoes very thoroughly is, and now I have some muck here, which didn't come out. Is that you can also inspect everything very well. Because you know, if shoes are damaged, and especially if you have got the profile that is damaged, um, well, basically in the, in the mountains, it can be dangerous because you might slip. So this is really a good way of 
getting a lot of feedback from your shoes. And you know, when I'm cleaning my shoes, it's always a sort of, it's really soothing. Um, that was the rough dirt. Now what I do, I take my washing thingy and I can take a little bit of water and just wash it like this. It's really gentle. And in this way I can get on the leathery part or on the fabric part, I can do a lot. Now where the um, toothbrush comes in very handy is if you have to go the, behind the eyelets and because then you get the muck out of there as well and also in the little wrinkles that we have here. That one is clean. Now I've got three to go. Um, one thing that I will show you on this one is that there's a lot of muck there but on the eyelets because it's got these little ball bearings in there um, the, the, taking the laces out is really important because if you've got mud in the eyelets with the ball bearings well then things get stuck and things will wear down faster so that's where you need the toothbrush and like I said if you don't have a big brush just a small nail brush will work as well now let me continue with all of these and then I'll see you inside again now it was getting quite dark outside so I hope I did a good job now um, what you do now is when the, the shoes are wet what I always like to do is just take a piece of paper put the shoes on it space between them so they can breathe and now just let them sit overnight so that they can dry naturally. Don't, 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 don't put them um, near the heater. Don't use a blowtorch for your hair or a paint blower. Don't do it, just let them dry naturally. And if it takes longer than just before your next hike, you just need another pair of shoes because if you dry them with artificial heat basically, it's really bad for the leather. It dries out, it wrinkles, it starts to break after a while. Um, both boots have got a Gore-Tex liner, so since our last walk um, this afternoon, the shoes are still dry on the inside. Um, it was cold outside, so it's, there's no sweat in it as well. Now, if you've got totally full leather boots and they have gone wet on the inside, maybe when you were cleaning it, um, then what you do is, and I know not everybody agrees on this, uh, you take a piece of paper and it's new, it's an old, very old trick. Make little balls of it and put it inside the shoes. If you are afraid that the um, printing ink of the paper is going to do anything to your boots, I've never noticed it, but what I also know from a couple of friends who are afraid of this, um, then just wrap it into tissue paper and put it in there. What you also can use is just pieces of towel that absorbs um, humidity also very well. Or you can use a whole tissue roll, but I think it's really a little bit of a waste of material. Um, what you should be a little bit aware of if you've got shoes and maybe where is that pair? It's over here. If you've got shoes that are not lined with a Gore-Tex liner, but in this case with a really nice soft leather, then I would advise you not to use uh, newspapers just because of the risk that maybe some of the ink might get in there and that would really be a pity. Now put that one back again. The shoelaces, they are bathing in a little bathtub at the moment, so with a little bit of detergent in this case, so I can clean them as well and they will be fresh tomorrow too. Now, this is all for this moment. They just need to dry. So for me, this means that after the hike, I can take a shower and be fresh again tomorrow. And we are back in business. And let me get my cup out of the way and my cup of tea. Good morning. Um, overnight, the shoes have dried and they are really nice and fresh again. And also my laces. They smell like flowery fresh again, so I can use them later. Now, um, as you might be able to see, it's not only a lady shoe and a men's shoe, but it's also different materials. This is just a normal leather shoe. Normal, um, it's a big one of course. But this one, it's a little bit of a different type of leather because it's a rough type. Now, 
to apply maintenance to the same kind of maintenance to both shoes would be stupid. So let me get my box with maintenance stuff and I'll explain you what the difference basically is. Now, bear with me. Over the years, I've got a big box of nice maintenance goodies. And I'll try to explain a little bit. You can hear my, my chair, it's squeaking once in a while. Now, um, spray, a cloth, another cloth. I've got, of course, spare laces because you need them once in a while. Um, leather grease, this is for my Lundhaag's boots. Um, they are fully leather, maybe a little bit more on that later. But what is more important? Where do I have it? That's the conditioner for leather. That's another one. That's a sport wax, which is also good. Snow seal, if you go into really wet conditions in the snow. Um, this is just for my wife's normal shoes. This is what I'm looking for. Now, and let me get this one. Now, get the box out of the way, and I'll show you a little bit what the difference is. If you just do a quick maintenance, because, well, your shoes have dried and you don't want to do the whole thing, or you just did it, then you just use one of those sprays. It's a nano um, spray that just puts a new water repellent layer on the outside of um, a shoe, uh, which protects it against rain and wet conditions. Um, and it also basically rejuveniles, no, it re-impregnates the leather a little bit. But this is only for the short term stuff. Now, if you want to do proper maintenance like I like to do it, what you do need is basically wax. And um, there are so many different types of wax and so many different types of how to put it onto a shoe. Um, for example, and it's not about the brand, it's just about the way how they do it, but this is a Nick wax thingy. Um, it's a conditioner for leather and it's got this little brush on there. So you just apply it on top of the shoe and you roll it. I like this, but what I even like better... Now, this is for regular leather, for this kind of shoe. This is a special one, also with a nice rub-on tool, but a very soft one. Um, this one is for Nubuk leather. Now, why is there a difference between the normal leather grease and Nubuk leather grease. Well, in the first place, if I use, for example, these are really nice old stuff that I use. Now, what I like to use is basically beeswax. And this one is from Granger's, but I know Nick Wax has got the same. And every big outdoor shoe manufacturer, they basically got their own maintenance set. So I know that Hanwax, Loa, Mindel, they all have it. Um, but this is just regular B-Wax. And the nice thing about B-Wax is, is that it is very easy to use um, and it feeds the leather. And that means that it remains more waterproof and also it remains more um, subtle. Is that how you, so that it moves easily. Now, if you use B-Wax on a Nubuck or a sort of rough leather, the only thing that will happen, it will feed the leather the same way, but what does happen is you get these dark spots and you don't get the beautiful soft look of um, the new book leather. So in that way, this is not the best to use. Um, better use one of those other rub-on things, which basically is better for the new book leather. Now, let me start with my wife's shoes. And therefore I need, where is it? Where did I put it? The new book stuff. Now, and in this case, um, I've checked yesterday if the boot is still okay. Let me get those out of the way. Now, what you do is you just take the stuff and you go onto the fabric itself and you will see that it gets in there. And this is a very easy way of doing this. Um, of course, there are pieces of nylon in here as well. Also on this part, you don't take that one, of course, but where the laces are, the nylon laces, of course, you take them with you because you want to fit the leather what's around it. And also make sure that you always are close onto the connection point between the outsole and the leather upper. Um, what is a good idea is now that I'm at it, um, I'll just let this one, there's, I missed the spot, let this one dry. But I'll show you the other one. Um, so you know what it looks like in the end if you use pure beeswax. And then you will see what it's 
you will see immediately that it has a sort of a waxy layer on top of it and this is something that's going to stick in there uh, which I think in the end doesn't look that good on this kind of shoes so that's why I'm not going to continue with this where did I leave it finish it with this one leave that part that I did with the beeswax open so that you can see the difference and these kind of sticks they're very easy to use and that's why I don't understand that people sometimes don't do any maintenance on their shoes because nowadays it's so easy to do this. And I like the whole process. Did I do this one on the other one? No, I don't think so. So let me do that one as well. Now, what I like to do is with shoes that are made out of a combination, in this case of leather um, and also of nylon or polyester synthetic materials, is I like to use one of those sprays when this has dried so that I can apply the waterproof laying on top of, um, let's say, the nylon parts as well. The important thing of waterproofing um, the boot, in this case, since it has a Gore-Tex liner, is of course not to waterproof your feet basically but if you impregnate your shoes well um, the leather or the nylon it doesn't absorb that much of water which means that your shoes will stay drier which means that they stay lighter and that means also that they stay warmer so especially in winter time um, when your feet and you're walking through wet grass uh, and the impregnation of a shoe has gone they will get wet and because it gets wet water wants to evaporate even with colder temperatures so that will drain the warmth basically from your feet and you will end up with cold feet it's a thing that my wife really hates like i think most women i don't like it either so maintenance is in this respect also important it's not just for your shoes but also for your feet being comfortable in the long term now let me get this one aside that will dry and now i will take my big Basically, they're my favorite boots. Um, what is important is that if you take the beeswax, while you take one of the other uh, products, which is possible, of course, too, is that you apply a thin layer of beeswax on it. It doesn't have to be a very thick one. And just go on the leather. Now, what is also very important is that you take the bumper around the shoe with it as well because also the rubber needs to be fed a little bit it keeps it more flexible and you don't get little cracks in the rubber on the flexing point and of course with this shoe i also checked um, if there is no damage whatsoever and when you buy shoes it's always good to have a good thought about uh, that they are resolable uh, these boots are resolable because I think that's very important for the durability and also for the sustainability of, uh, of shoes they're expensive products now let me finish this and I'll show you the end result in a while now I think that you will see the difference between the two of them, this one is a little bit more dark, this one is a little bit of more lightish color. Um, and this is how you do it. What is very important when you have shoes with a Gore-Tex liner or with a other membrane liner inside of it, um, is that the shoes of course need to be breathable also after you have applied maintenance. So that's the main reason why you don't apply too much of the uh, wax on it. Because if you put too much wax on it, um, it might um, deteriorate the way of how the gore works basically now what i also like to do is just keep the inside of the tongue with a little bit of wax now if you have full leather boots um, and let me get the half shoe again if you've got full leather boots like for example this one and um, this is for me just easy to explain it to you um, this leather also needs to be fed as well. Just use a little bit of bee wax again and this will also feed the inside of this shoe, just like this. And this one is easy of course because it's only a half shoe. Now let me get that one back there again uh, and I will continue with this one and well this takes about 15 minutes to do a pair um, so I think it's really a good investment if you want to keep your shoes for a longer period of time. And you know, I like my shoes. I love them. 
I have adventures with them. So that's why I always like to keep my shoes in tip top condition so I can have more adventures with them. And what is a good idea is when you do this, don't put on new clothes because wax can be sometimes hard to get out of your clothes. So that's the last one done. Let's put them aside because now what I do is I just wait a little time till the material, the wax is going into the fabric itself and I can drink a cup of tea. And after half an hour, I will show you what I do next. So half an hour has passed and you will see that, well, on those two, they're still a little bit waxy, but it is dried in nicely. Now, what I always like to do is just take a brush um, and just give it a good rubbing, just to get a little bit of wax, it's an excess there to get it over the whole boot as well. Now, that's for my shoes, the same with my wife's, but you will see probably quite clearly that um, what I said about the wax, the beeswax onto the fabric itself, onto the new book leather, you will see that here there is still this dark spot remaining and this will stay there until basically um, the leather has dried out. So I don't think this looks that good, but let's do the same with the boots of my wife's. Now, you can do this, of course, with a brush, but you can do this with a new clean cloth as well. Now, all I need to do now is get the laces back in place. Now, with the last lace in place, I'm done with the expert advice, how-to tutorial on how to clean and maintain your hiking and backpacking boots. And I know for sure those two look absolutely gorgeous again and ready for the next adventures. And I also know that my wife will be happy about her shoes because she absolutely hates cleaning them. Now, if you like this video, then please give it a like and leave a comment below. And also, if you've got any suggestions, remarks or questions, use the comment section. And I'm more than happy to answer everything that you can throw at me. Now, if this was the first time that you've seen one of my videos, then you might not know that I am a 100% outdoor gear and bike reviewer and I'm based in the Netherlands. And if you like what I do, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the alarm bell so you know when I uploaded a new video. Because with more subscribers, I can make more videos. Now, if you're not totally convinced yet or just really like what I do, then please continue watching. I'll put a few links in the description below again. And I will also make a link up there with my favorite outdoor gear playlist. So you can have a look at that as well. So if you continue watching, then enjoy the videos. And if you're done for today, then I would say enjoy the outdoors and stay safe. Ciao, ciao. Bam. That's a wrap. Um, and I'll also put a few of the products in the link below. And no, I'm not being paid for this. So just that you know. If you want to support me, by the way, you can also do a very small donation through my Ko-fi account. Also link below so I can stay independent and still make some money out of the videos that I do. Many, many thanks in advance.